to She's At It Again. My name is Tanya, and on this summer afternoon, we need to get some supper started. We're going to be making some fried potatoes, and that's not all we're having, but that's all I'm going to video. And the reason why is because someone contacted me. Okay, it was my sister. She said that she has a friend that doesn't know how to make fried potatoes, and she contacts her and asks her how to make them every time she gets ready to make them. Now, if you're a Southerner, you're probably going, why, why are you showing people how to make fried potatoes? Everybody knows how to make fried potatoes. <laughs> and if you're not from the South, you're probably going, what's a fried potato? So go with us as we make some fried potatoes. Like I said, it's not the only thing we're having. We have some peas out of the garden now. I have tomatoes coming in. I had a friend give me some tomatoes. I'm gonna make some cornbread and we're gonna have fried potatoes with that. So go with us as we make some fried potatoes. All right, this is gonna be pretty simple. Actually, let me get a container. All right, we have our container to put our potatoes in. I'm gonna slice these up. Some people use a mandolin slicer if you wanna get really fancy and slice them thin. I don't necessarily need to be fancy with mine. I'm just gonna cut them into chunks. Now keep in mind, for those of you who haven't been cooking a long time, the smaller you cut these, the quicker they're going to cook. You get a big old chunk in there and it's going to take a while for the heat to get to the center of the potato, thus making it a longer cooking time. So smaller you cut them, the faster they're going to cook. So this is about the size of ours. I would say if you ever played a board game and you got a dice, it's about the size of a dice. We're not having guests over tonight, otherwise I would make a lot of fried potatoes because normally it's one of those things that people just like. These are also good reheated. And they're pretty versatile, so you could put them inside a tortilla along with some scrambled eggs and sausage or bacon, if you like, for a breakfast dish. Or just reheat them in the oven or in a skillet. There's a little piece like that, like a little discolored piece, just get rid of that. So these hardly ever go to waste. You just don't have a lot of people throwing away fried potatoes because if there's any left, you either reheat them to eat them just as fried potatoes or like I said, in something or with something. You could probably make up your own dish with fried potatoes. They're pretty versatile. Now I scrubbed these real well with my little kitchen scrubby sponge before I got started so there's not any dirt or anything. In fact, I had them soaking in, the, in water in the other sink before I scrubbed them. You want to get all the debris off of them. I mean, obviously potatoes grow in the ground, but if there's any pieces like that on them, they're pretty easy to see once you cut them up. All right, the potatoes are cut up. We're ready to go fry these up, so let's go over to the stove. All right, this is what I'm using to fry my potatoes in. You can use something like olive oil or avocado oil. You can use bacon grease. My bacon grease I keep in the fridge, but this is from uncured bacon. Making better choices includes researching your stuff. Don't use cured bacon. They sell cured, they sell uncured bacon and you can use um, the fat from that bacon. You can also use butter. So <laughs> don't think, oh, I can't make fried potatoes. I don't have any oil or grease. Yeah, 
you can use butter and uh, it would be quite delicious. And I can't really give you an amount of this because it just depends on how much potatoes you have to cook. So I'm going to put, that's pretty close to, I'd say a tablespoon to two tablespoons of bacon grease in there. We're going to let this heat up before we put our potatoes in it, so we'll be right back. All right, I had to let my doggie out. She was acting weird but she just wanted to go out in the yard and see what that noise was. <laughs> just never know. If doggies could talk, we'd be, well, somewhat okay. All right, I have my burner on pretty high. I have it on about medium heat, but I'm gonna turn this down just a bit. Now, I would say also, before you start peeling your potatoes and, or not peeling your potatoes, before you start cutting your potatoes up, make sure they're dry. And the reason I say that is from experience, if you put wet potatoes in hot grease, it's gonna splatter everywhere. So if you just dry them off, they're gonna splatter less. It's not they're not gonna splatter at all, they're just gonna splatter less. So, okay, let's put our potatoes in here. But make sure your oil or your grease or your butter is hot before putting them in the skillet. This is just Himalayan pink salt. Most people just put salt or salt and pepper. You can also put rubbed sage in there. You can put rosemary, whatever flavor you want in there. Just add it to it. You can always add more later but you can't take it off once you put it on there, so just keep that in mind. You want to keep the potatoes moving around quite a bit at first because otherwise they have a tendency to stick to a skillet. Not necessarily if it's super hot, but they'll have more of a tendency to stick if you leave them in one place for a long time. So part of the idea of cooking fried potatoes is you don't want to leave the lid off because heat contained is going to be a higher heat than if you just leave the lid off. So what we're gonna do is cover this up, let the heat stay in there, cook the potatoes real well, they'll get soft. Then we take the lid off because if you leave the lid on, it starts condensating inside and it makes the potatoes mushy. And ideally, you want them to be soft in the center, crisp on the outside, like a French fry. Not, not much different than a French fry, but these are not deep fried. These are just fried in enough oil to coat them and get them hot. So let's let those cook. You can tell that some of these are getting brown. So that's what we want to just toss them enough to where as many sides of each potato piece as possible gets brown. They start to turn translucent when they start getting done in the middle too. So they'll go from a milky white to a translucent. That's how you know they're getting tender and cooked all the way through.
Okay, at this point we can now leave the lid off of it. As you can tell, it kind of makes a mess around the countertop, but that's just part of it. Leave the lid off and let them crisp up a bit, otherwise that condensation will make them a little mushy, kind of like having your uh, french fries in a really humid area. And as you can see, they're not just floating in oil. There's, there's not a lot of grease left in the bottom or not a lot of that bacon fat left in the bottom. It's been absorbed mostly by the potatoes. Okay, so this is actually what fried potatoes look like in their finished state. I'm going to turn the burner off now, and they're done. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. Now keep in mind, I can put a recipe in the description of this video, but it's just going to be potatoes and bacon fat. And that's pretty much it. But I'll do my best in writing down a description. But hope you've enjoyed this. Get something out of it. Make a Southerner happy and make this for them when they come to your house. So see you next time. Bye, guys.